the Disney Vacation Club be looking at upending how their entire program works, maybe even allowing the ability to book multiple resorts at 11 months out? And it could all be starting with the cabins at Fort Wilderness. Will it happen? Won't it happen? Well, we're gonna have to wait and see. But it never hurts to speculate. Let's talk all about it right after this. Hello and welcome to Destination Time Share. I'm Jeremy. Today we're gonna to be talking about Disney Vacation Club and what is this potential new Disney Vacation Club Trust Vacation Ownership Program that you might have heard about or maybe even you haven't heard about. Well, we're gonna be talking about that today. So let's talk about what is a trust and how might it apply to Disney Vacation Club. But before I do that, I do wanna point out here that I'm kind of just giving you my opinion based on my understanding of how trust programs work in other timeshare systems. We're not actually Disney Vacation Club timeshare owners, but I do own in a couple of other timeshare systems that do have trust products. And I've also actually poured over over 200 pages of public record filings by Disney Vacation Club development. My opinion shared here is from my general knowledge of timeshare systems and this public information kind of just gathering and bringing it all together to try and hopefully help out you if you're wanting to know more about what this is and how it works. But what exactly is a timeshare trust? Well, in this type of situation, it's actually a land trust that's on public record filed, in this case, in Orange County, Florida. And essentially what happens is that trust owns a bunch of different properties, different resorts, land, maybe in some cases, dated weeks, parts of a unit at a resort, whole units, whole properties. That all gets loaded into this land trust. Then a number of points are assigned to a land trust. And those points are then kind of bundled together and sold as beneficial interests in the trust. So by purchasing a beneficial interest, you actually purchase a certain number of points. You now own those points and can use those points within the timeshare program. So now that we've talked about kind of what a trust is or could be, let's talk about what Disney Vacation Club has done and kind of what actually brought this whole thing up it was actually a survey or a question in a survey late in 2023, kind of put the question out there of would you potentially be interested in purchasing into a system that allowed booking at multiple resorts at 11 months out? Currently within the Disney Vacation Club system, you would own points at a specific resort. You can reserve into that resort at 11 months and only that resort. And then at the seven month mark, well, you can kind of exchange into other resorts using your points. They asked that question, would you be interested in multiple resorts? So now you wouldn't be limited to just one single resort. If you owned potentially in what we're thinking is a trust program, well, you might be able to book and reserve 11 months out at multiple resorts. So now let's actually talk about what they've actually done. They first started out back in August of 2023 by filing documents with the state of Florida and registering a new trust owners association. And that is actually called the Palmetto Trust Association Inc. Essentially sets up a nonprofit trust owners association. The list of directors and names associated with that, well, so the usual suspects when it comes to Disney Vacation Development Inc. And next up, they also created a master declaration, covenants, conditions, and restrictions also called CCNR, or what this is, is essentially a document that lays the groundwork for the rules, regulations, kind of of the overall property or resort. This being both Fort Wilderness Campground and cabins at Fort Wilderness Resort. Then there's also a common facilities agreement. So that kind of lays out the groundwork between what is essentially Fort Wilderness Campground owned by Walt Disney Parks and Resorts and the cabins at Fort Wilderness, which are essentially owned or will be owned by this new trust. You have shared utilities, you have shared amenities, shared pools, playgrounds, transportation, all that. So next up, we have a memorandum of ground lease between Walt Disney Parks and Resorts US Inc. and Disney Vacation Development Inc. This is essentially a ground lease because that ground or that property at Walt Disney World, where these cabins will sit at Fort Wilderness, that's actually owned by Walt Disney Parks and Resorts. And somehow in order to get it over to DVC, they've created this ground lease. Then next up, we have a declaration, covenants, 
conditions and restrictions specifically for the cabins at Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort. Kind of creates all the rules and regulation if you're going to be purchasing into this program of what you can do, what you can't do, what you're allowed to do, if you want to sell, what you can do, what happens, right of first refusal, conditions surrounding other things as well. Then part of that is actually a use plan. Specifically, the use plan is named Cabins Resort Use Plan. How, uh, how original is that? But that use plan kind of sets up kind of, well, the use of those cabins and how that will also operate. And now we're coming into some, what might seem like more important documents, but they're all kind of important in their own way because they all kind of have to work together. We have the new trust established called Palmetto Trust. Notice the name there, Palmetto Trust, similar to that Palmetto Trust Association. And it is actually with First American Trust FSB as the trustee. So First American Federal Savings Bank is essentially a trustee for this trust. This is kind of how a lot of these other systems work. Marriott Vacation Club, their trust is also with First American. So just kind of take that as it is. Kind of has to be a separate entity that is the trustee here. Then we have a master mortgage agreement. Not going to get into too much detail on that. Then we also have a partial assignment of ground lease. We talked about that ground lease a little bit earlier. Definitely both kind of important documents here. But this partial assignment of ground lease, essentially what they're doing is they're taking that ground lease that they have, they're taking a chunk off of that, and they're assigning that chunk or that piece of ground lease to the trust. That trust being the Palmetto Trust. And now if we want to understand really what is kind of part of that ground lease that they're moving or conveying to the trust, well, it looks to be actual acreage of that ground lease. And in fact, a parcel that is 3.949 acres more or less. And that actually looks to be the 2300 loop of the resort. If you're kind of looking at a resort map, well, that is the one that's labeled 2300. And on that almost four acres, it looks like there's gonna be 30 cabins there. Definitely passing acreage on and not specifically actual buildings or units. And there's also a smaller piece of ground lease here for land that is 1.2 two five one acres and that actually looks to be common area in fact the wilderness swimming pool so that's the smaller pool at the overall fort wilderness resort and then now we also have another document that's called the notice of addition and activation of trust property to palmetto trust so they moved that ground lease in now what they're doing with those two parcels of land is they're essentially assigning a number of points to them. And specifically here, it is 229,820 points. So overall, it looks like those 30 cabins will essentially be worth 229,820 points for the entire booking year. And going forward and into the future, there will definitely be additional assignments of ground lease and additional activations of trust points. Essentially kind of a multi-step process here. They have to add that ground lease to the trust then they have to give it a number of points before they can eventually sell those points to purchasers. So now that we've kind of looked and talked about those documents, what are they all for? We definitely know in here that they're for the cabins at Fort Wilderness Resort because they've essentially moved inventory into the trust that is part of Fort Wilderness Resort. And now part of these documents, they also say Disney Vacation Development has reserved the rights to add additional use plans to the trust, but until and unless they do, it applies only to the cabins at Fort Wilderness. So with that, you kind of get the thoughts going in your mind, you know, of being able to book multiple resorts starting at 11 months out. Because essentially, this is a land trust. It can own any type of land. It can own individual units. It can own entire resorts, entire units, entire plots of property, essentially. There is definitely the possibility and potentially the likelihood that they will actually add other resorts in the future. Big question is the new Polynesian Tower that they're building over at the Polynesian Resort. Will that get added to this trust as well? We're gonna have to wait and see. But I think initially they had to create this land trust in order to support the development and the sale of the cabins at Fort Wilderness. And the reason I say that is essentially because those cabins aren't real property. They can move them in and they can move them out. Kind of like a mobile home, kind of like a trailer. They're not really on wheels necessarily, but they're not real property like you would have with a leasehold condominium, which is what all of the other Disney Vacation Club Resort properties are. They're essentially a building with a foundation. They're affixed. You can't pick them up, take them away, move them or anything like that. So those are essentially kind of deeded property in the case of leasehold condominium here. I think what they had to do essentially was because those cabins aren't going to be affixed, 
they're probably gonna have to replace them before the normal kind of 50 year expiration of a Disney Vacation Club deed. Well, they had to essentially create this land trust. And in my opinion, my thoughts right now, it's really only for, like they said, the cabins at Fort Wilderness. And going back to that survey question where they asked about the ability to book at 11 months at multiple resorts, I think what probably happened there was, as they were kind of developing this system for the cabins at Fort Wilderness, a light bulb probably went off in somebody's head sitting in a conference room or on a conference table, or even maybe on a Zoom call or who knows what they use. Hey, you know what? This land trust actually would give us the ability to put multiple resorts into the trust, and then we could sell the ability for owners to be able to book multiple resorts at 11 months. So I think then what they decided to say, hey, that's a great idea. Let's go out and ask the membership, see what they would think. Of course, you know, they don't always listen to the membership, and certainly they do things that the membership doesn't even ask for. But I think that's kind of what happened here. They're creating this trust for the cabins at Fort Wilderness. They got the idea, hey, this gives us other options down the road. Let's see where it goes. Will they do it? Will they not? I'm not really sure. We're just going to have to wait and see. So how does this really help Disney? Well, it helps them be able to sell cabins at Fort Wilderness. It might be a cheaper option kind of going forward. I don't really know if there's really any cost savings there. It does give them the ability to potentially create a new product now or in the future, or even if we're thinking about those 2042 resorts when they're getting ready to expire well they might now have a solution for those instead of having to figure out what to do well they can just take those put them into a trust and just start reselling points the ability to book at any of those 2042 resorts at the 11th month mark by anybody who owns within that land trust program or whether it's this one or whether it's a different one in the future so now we know how it might help disney how might it actually Hurt existing members. Well, if they set up a land trust, obviously that's gonna be a whole lot of inventory that's owned by a specific entity, specific trust. And you have all of those owners in there, they've put all these resorts in there, maybe Alani, maybe the Polynesian Tower, maybe the villas at Disneyland Hotel, the 2042 resorts, and all those points are in there. And those people want all of those great prime dates to make their reservations. Well, there's only a certain number of prime dates you have this huge number of points out there, huge number of owners, it might make getting reservations at the seven and 11 month mark a little, or even a lot more difficult. We don't really know. We might have to wait and see. We might never even know because it might not even be a program that they're creating because they're essentially just doing it for the cabins at Disney's Ford Wilderness. We've actually never been there, but we have been to Disney's Wilderness Lodge. Great resort, a great property. And if you want to see another video about that property and Five others, we actually did a Disney Vacation Club five in five stay, five resorts in five days. Can you believe it? I'll give you a link to it right here. So head over there and check that out. I'd definitely appreciate it. Thanks for watching. And remember, until next time, the best destination is a Disney Vacation Club.